Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope for those of you who have just embarked on lockdown 2.0, like us here in England, that things are going okay. I hope that your spirits are still uplifted and I hope that you're all well and safe. Now, today's video is kind of a little bit of a follow-on from last week's video, or essentially was probably the video that should have come before last week's video, but I touched on having a cohesive wardrobe and how that was a main element in making it really easy to put outfits together. And actually quite a lot of you reached out, some of you slid right the way into my DMs to ask me about what is my method in creating a cohesive wardrobe. And now that a lot of us are in lockdown, it is a good time to rework your wardrobe if that's something that you were looking at doing. And that's on whatever scale, whether it be something quite small, like just a general reorganize, or whether it be something much bigger, like a complete reinvention of your style. So hopefully this video will give you some tips on how to do this regardless of whatever stage you're at. Okay, so step number one, and this for me is the most important step, and this is to decide on your style and to create a mood board. Now this could be done digitally, which I personally find is the easiest and the most efficient, or if you're a little bit old school, you could do the whole magazine and print stick thing and create an actual physical mood board. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to focus on a digital mood board because that would be my chosen method. And this is where you can add things that you feel emulate the style that you want to achieve. So this is your chance to really think about what you want your style to be about. You'll want to consider all elements of your lifestyle when doing this, so pets, children, job, what you like to do in your spare time, all of that good stuff, as all of these things inevitably will have some kind of impact on your style choices. But this is the fun part and it's the most important part. So I would advise investing a decent amount of time into this process. So whether it be days, weeks, months, whatever your schedule will allow, I would say maybe try and do an hour a day here and there and then leave it for a few days, come back to your board and reassess what you've already pinned on there and just see if you still feel the same way about it. If not, remove it from your board. And if you do, then you can keep moving on with your board and pinning new inspirations and new ideas. Moving on to step number two, which is assess what you already own. Now, this is where you're going to get really hands on with your wardrobe, but you will also need your style mood board for this step as well. So my personal preferred method is to remove absolutely everything from your wardrobe so that you have a completely blank canvas to start off with. Now, some of you guys might have seen this in some of my wardrobe switchovers. It's the same kind of method. It's also a good idea to give the inside of your wardrobe a good clean so that everything is really fresh for you to start the rebuild. Now it's time to start going through what you've removed from your wardrobe. And I tend to do this in categories because it just makes it easier. So jeans, trousers, tops, knitwear, accessories, shoes, etc., etc. Now with your mood board to hand, assess each piece and ask yourself the question, does it fit in with my desired style? Does it fit in with what I've got pinned on my mood board? And this is a stage where you've gotta be quite harsh with yourself if you want to stick to this mood board. This is also a good time to try things on and to make sure that they still fit and to check if anything needs any potential repairs or adjustments. If an item no longer fits in with your new style or perhaps it just doesn't fit in general, then that can go to one side in what I call the no no pile. But it must be mentioned that the no pile isn't to be discounted as this will be a very valuable pile, which I'll explain more in a little bit. Now, any pieces that do fit in with your mood board can go back into your wardrobe. And this is a really good time, especially if you're doing a completely from scratch clear out to reorganize as you go along. And this will depend on how much space you have for each category. And you might need to adjust this as you work through each category pile. Moving on to step number three, which is make a list. Okay, so you've gone through your existing wardrobe and you've curated this with the help of your style mood board. 
So if you're making quite a big drastic change to your style, then you'll need to make a list of pieces that are missing and that you'll need to create the core or the base of this new wardrobe. Now, just speaking from personal preference and experience, I would advise having a separate list from your mood board just so that you don't get distracted by all of the outfits and the style in general, and so that you have a clear view of the actual pieces that you want to add. Now you could still curate this on Pinterest if imagery is more your thing rather than text. As you guys might have seen in some of my previous videos, I actually use this method for keeping a specific wish list of actual products that I am looking to buy in the future. Okay, and on to step number four, which is setting yourself a budget. Now the rebuilding of your wardrobe is inevitably going to involve some cost, unless of course you can do it all by swapping, in which case that's awesome. But for the most part, I feel like there is going to be some additional cost involved. So it's up to you to set yourself a budget that you feel comfortable with and is within your means. Okay, so there are a few ways to make the most of your budget. Firstly, and mainly, is to shop second hand. And I know I bang on about this a lot, but it really is a great way to save money. Now, if you're into your designer goods, it's a good idea to keep an ear to the ground for sample sales because these offer very hefty reductions. However, it's worth mentioning that sample sales only really tend to be held in cities that have a high fashion focus. So for example, London, Paris, New York, etc. But again, buying designer goods pre-loved off sites like Vestiaire, and the real real do have a lot of potential to save you a big chunk of money. Now I talk a lot about longevity of the items within your wardrobe and quality. So buying quality will save you money in the long run. So whilst it might be tempting to buy a cheap four pound t-shirt to add to your basics collection so that you can get this new wardrobe up and running as soon as possible, it is actually worth saving for longer and buying a better quality item albeit at a slightly higher price tag because it will last you so much longer. And now moving on to step number five, which is sell to buy. Okay, so remember that no pile that we created back in step two when we went through the wardrobe? Well, this is where we're gonna come back to that because that no pile holds a large amount of value, which we can inject back into the new wardrobe. Right, so you can use this pile of unwanted items to sell on in order to fund the purchases of those items that you have on your list. Because remember, one woman's trash is another woman's treasure. And not only does this benefit you by injecting some money into your budget, but it also keeps clothing and accessories within that circle of life rather than going to the dreaded landfill. And from here, you can then go on to rebuild your wardrobe. For me, it took a few years to build up and it's still very much an ongoing process because of course, style does tend to evolve with your lifestyle. But there's absolutely no rush to get it done as quickly as possible. There will be depending factors like budget and how much time you have to invest into this process and into searching for items. But the main thing is, to enjoy it. So there will be lots of videos coming up that are gonna feature my particular style staples, brand recommendations, styling tips, secondhand shopping tips, all of that good stuff. And I hope that whatever stage of style journey you're on, whether it be reinventing yourself or whether it just be little tweaks here and there, hopefully these videos will have a great deal of value for you. But for now, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any queries, questions, you want my take on anything, do leave those down below in the comment section. Alternatively, you can head over to Instagram if you wanted to message me privately. You can slide your way into my DMs. And yeah, take care guys, stay safe, and I will see you next time.